and welcome to the Meeple Mentor YouTube channel. I'm Jared, and with me as always is Holly, and today we're doing a review of Dungeon Draft, a drafting game based about, you know, dungeon crawling, like a D&D &D experience, but done through card play and drafting. Um, this is published by Upper Deck Entertainment and designed by Justin Gary. Uh, we played this a few times, two player, and uh, it plays two to five players. Um, I, I had a pretty good time with this. What do you think? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> These, um, I don't want to say drafting games are not for me because I do enjoy drafting games. Yeah. Um, this particular one, I'm not sure what, I just... Mm. It didn't hit with me. Okay. I, I don't know why. It's pretty. It's playable. Mm -hmm. Like, by all rights, I should enjoy it because sure. you know, it's just one of those games, you know? Sure. I mean, but it is in that. Uh, I love the art. The yeah. art is amazing. I mean, some of the artwork there, just beautiful. Um, some of the stuff is very cute, too. You wouldn't expect. We also only played it twice, so it could be, you know, that I was tired when we played. You Maybe. Know? I, but... Uh, I should like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say I really enjoyed it, actually. Um, and I like drafting games. And so to me, this is kind of more like an advanced Sushi Go experience where you're drafting and collecting cards, but instead of playing them immediately, the whole draft is done, and then you take turns playing everything that you've collected. But another big difference is you have to pay uh, gold coins, you know, for uh, for the co cards that you want to play. Um, when played, a lot of the cards will have an effect that will immediately trigger, which may let you end up collecting more gold to use that round or let you draw some more cards for free off the deck. Um, so you don't always know, you know, what kind of good stuff you might be able to do on your turn until you kind of play it through. Um, but you're collecting both heroes and weapon cards. Um, these are also going to stay out round to round, and for a couple of good reasons. Uh, sometimes these cards will have uh, money on the side, like this here. It's got a coin value, and you get to collect your gold production at the end of your turn. Um, by default, you get to draw or collect five gold coins at the end of your turn, plus anything that's on cards you know, face up in front of you. Um, but the other thing is combat points which is found on a lot of those heroes and weapons as well. And the combat points can be, uh, you know, continually added up from round to round and get stronger and stronger for the rest of the game over the four rounds that you play. Um, because the third main type of card that you're going to draft are the monsters. So if you have a monster in your hand, you can, you know, defeat it as long as the attack value in front of you or from given bonuses that turn are the same or higher than any monster that you're trying to defeat. Um, I did enjoy the monsters. And I do think, you know, a lot of these are kind of the classic. You got dragons, zombies, this, you know, we've got the ram here, um, the Grindel beast of Hrothgar. So a lot of varying fantasy based creatures um, that will give you sometimes money, sometimes experience points, uh, sometimes both. Now, just because you use, you know, like, let's say your five attack power on your cards doesn't mean that it's going to go away or you discard anything. That five power that you have can be applied for every monster that you're attacking from then on forward. Um, so it's, you know, once you kind of get your attack strong enough, then you're like, okay, well, let me just draft these monsters that I know I can just easily beat without having to worry about playing some of these other cards as well. Um, but I, as I said, there's four rounds of drafting. Um, you're going to get seven cards and you just draft, you know, uh, one direction, one time, uh, one turn and the other direction, uh, the next time. Um, and essentially you're just collecting all these different types of cards. And when it comes to your turn, that round to play, you try to pay what you can to play what you can. Um, you want to make sure you have income on your cards. You'll also receive experience points. Um, another thing that I noticed you didn't mention um, that I think is a big difference mm -hmm. between this and Sushi Go mm -hmm. uh, is the quest cards. Yes. Uh, so another reason you want to collect these... You have different factions or are they mm -hmm. classes? Are they classes? classes? They yeah. Denoted right here, you know. Um, and you'll collect them and then you'll match it up here at the top. Mm -hmm. 
um, see, by all rights, I should like it. It sounds like I yeah. enjoy it, right? I just yeah. it didn't click for me. I don't understand. Maybe a few more plays. And Maybe, yeah, I'd be down to play it again. Board. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, uh, you know, it is it is a lot of fun. Um, and she's right. The quests are a really big difference from this and something like Sushi Go. Now, the rules do mention you can play or opt to play without them. Oh, um, sorry, but they give it. you <laughs> they give you special actions, and they also give you. Um, the experience points. Yes. So it's good to get them out on the table. Yeah, some of these will have immediate effects, sometimes ongoing one-time-per-round effects. Um, other times, like you said, you'll earn, vic uh, not victory points, but experience points, um, or additional combat points, which counts as one of your cards in front of you played uh, towards fighting more monsters in the game. Um, so essentially, to get these played, you just have to have the exact you know number or more uh, of those types of class cards, whether they're heroes or weapons, it doesn't matter. Um, and then you can play the quests. Um, you are dealt, I believe, five at the beginning of the game. Yes. And you choose three of those yes. to be your quests for the rest of the game, and then you can't get any more. Um, and it plays pretty fast. I mean, it's not, it a, does. it's not a long game. So, you know, you think, oh, well, can't get any more quests. I think you'll, three is enough. Like, you will find it difficult enough to get all three played by the end of the game anyway. This is true. Um, because you're only going to get four rounds of seven cards to try to get out. So um, I recommend trying to find amongst those five any that are synergistic. And, of course, that means use of the same class icon so that hopefully, you know, you can kind of specialize um, the kinds of cards that you're collecting and playing. Um, I think if you like drafting games, you'd really enjoy this. Um, I, the really only detriment is that the theme is pretty basic. You know, it's got your standard fantasy Dungeons and Dragons maybe theme. Maybe I feel it's too simple. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could do an expansion or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, I, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, Sushi Go is as straightforward as it comes. I'm not wild about Sushi Go either, though, to be fair, you know? And I keep comparing it because <laughs> they're both very straightforward drafting games at its core. But this is one step in complexity because you mm -hmm. do have the collection of XP and the use and collection of spending coins uh, to play those cards. Um, and how they interact is a little more complicated than just, say, you know, sets of two or three types of cards. Um, but I would still put this in a very easy-to-teach, easy-to-learn, fast-playing gateway game, or even, you know, game to play between some heavy stuff to break up, you know, a long For session. For sure, a gateway game, yeah. Um, whether or not it, you know, it's a Sushi Go killer, I, I don't necessarily think so. Um and maybe, like she said, maybe some expansions and stuff like that might be the the ticket here to, you know, give you more length and longevity of gameplay. Because, um, you know, I think once you've kind of played through all the cards, you kind of know what to look for and which ones are going to end up benefiting you later. For example, in our second game, I started collecting the Phoenix cards, oh. which the more you get, the more points you get from them. So that's a definite set, co set collection type of thing. And I didn't do it as hard the first game because I wasn't sure how many we'd get to see yeah. or how many there really were, or if it was worth it. But the second game, I said, well, I'm just going to try to draft all of them. <laughs> and <laughs> I ended up getting a lot of points. Oh, we also, on the second game, we also incorporated... A new two-player drafting variant, originally made by Richard Garfield. That's the, I'm not good with names. Yep. So this was the two-player Garfield two, uh, drafting variant. And if you've not seen or used it in any other drafting games for two players, essentially, uh, in this case, since you're drafting seven cards, you give everyone their seven-card hand or the two players. You also create a seven-card deck in front of them along with it for that round. Uh, and then when you draft... You look at your hand, you draw a card from your deck, choose one to keep and one to discard, and then you pass the hand. So that way you're slowly, you know, getting an influx of two new cards every round, which really changes the dynamic in a two player game. Um, whereas you just don't have as many options unless, you know, in a two player setting. Honestly, it kept you from absolutely destroying me with those Phoenix shields or isn't that what they're called? I think so. Phoenix, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because every time I saw one, I was like, I'm not going to get that. Yeah. No, he's not getting it either. 
<laughs> so I find that the uh, the Richard Garfield two player variant drafting technique is absolutely crucial for games like this, um, where it's heavy on just drafting and what you get is what you you know can play. Um, so I recommend trying that out in if you do play two players, whether it's this game or any other drafting. Um, but did you find that you enjoyed it more using that technique as far as getting new cards faster, or did you like the basic? Just I pass. did. I generally do like adding that yeah. that drafting variant yeah. because I do feel that it gives me not only does I feel that I have terrible luck. <laughs> so I feel that not only gives me more control, but it also helps me say, oh, no, I don't think he needs that card right now. He's way up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it gives me a little more. Yeah. I, I would like to play this again with a larger player count to get a more rounded, you know, opinion of how this plays out. But um, I did enjoy the game a lot. I think the artwork is is good enough to keep you engaged in, you know, what you're what you're thematically doing. Um, and I think it, this, the systems here are very well connected. You know? I would be curious to see the time with... You more, know, players. more players because it's really yeah. quick with two i mean i, I feel think, like it wouldn't add that much i would think with a drafting game like this <clears throat> there's that simultaneous play right until everyone kind of kind of just takes their turn mm -hmm. um it probably wouldn't add too much time maybe like 10 minutes yeah so i would say this is going to be a 30 minutes to an hour game yes um and yeah i mean it's it's a lot of fun i really enjoyed it i think um more player counts probably get a little bit more uh, var variety without having to introduce that uh, two-player variant uh, of the draft. Yes, definitely. You know? yeah. um, but, you know, I, I recommend it. If you like drafting games and you want something a little bit more thematic than some of the other drafting games out there that you like the fantasy setting, um, this does it really well. I mean, there's really nothing wrong here. You know, I think it's a very good, fairly straightforward drafting game. Yeah, go pick it up. Maybe it is that I think it's too. Maybe it just went by too fast. So fast you couldn't even come up with a, a opinion that was like. Ah. Yeah, I don't. I, maybe I still don't have a solid opinion <laughs> yeah, on like, it. I gotta see it more to really get a <laughs> solid uh, view of this. But, yeah. You know, we did try it a couple times to make sure that we got through as much as we could of everything in here, and um, you know, for a small box, you know, you get a lot of content for sure. So that's our review of Dungeon Draft by Upper Deck Entertainment. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to our review today. Stick around on the channel and subscribe so you miss, don't miss out on any of our other reviews coming, uh, including other content on the channel, like our fully detailed tutorials, uh, news every other week. Um, I also want to plug real quick a book that I just wrote. You can get it on Amazon Kindle. Uh, it's an e-reader right now. I'm looking to publish it, uh, you know, a physical copy at some point. But it's called Push Your Luck, the Board Game Dictionary. Over 800 terms of board game terminology and, uh, you know, uh, jargon and terms and things like that mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to help you learn more about uh, this fun hobby. Or gift it to somebody who wants to kind of dig in for the first time and see what the what modern gamers are talking about and how they are using these new terms. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Definitely check it out. Um, but yeah, stick around and we'll see you on the next video. So I've been Jared. I'm Holly. Bye-bye. <laughs>